I just killed the ego. You bastard. <laughs>
10 minutes of the film is oh. intense and gripping and yep. you're like whoa what <laughs> and so like it yeah. starts off she's watching porn you're like why is she watching porn and then right. and then you go and they're like okay is she a prostitute and then you're like okay maybe he gave her a gift what okay so she's not a prostitute and then yes. they, the police barge in and they do they you know start harassing them and then you know he's all crying in the bathroom and then he shoots himself or no he cuts right. himself sorry no he cuts himself cuts yeah. himself cuts himself and that's just the first that's the opening of the film right I love yeah with very little being said as yeah. well i'm actually i'm looking up here to make sure about confirming and i'm, I'm pretty sure uh, yeah, it's it accurate is, it is his first film it is his first film okay yeah, right. yeah yeah i uh well for me the first thing i wrote i wrote one thing down it's it's like reading a long synopsis but this is for me the takeaway for this thing is that it's um it's two stories at once. It's both a literal one and an allegorical one. And I thought it was extraordinarily well done. So for example, the literal one is it's a slice of life story that helps us remember that um, to coin rocket from guardians of the galaxy, everybody's got dead people. Yep. And that, that, uh, and life is hard and not fair and tragic yet in the end um, there's, there's, you can you can look if you look for it you'll recognize that more often than not things happen for a reason if we just hang on long enough we might see i wrote down we might see our brokenness fits perfectly within the brokenness of another person yeah uh and i that's one of the things i did love about i mean there's a ton of things i loved about this film um but yeah that the fact that i feel like 10 people could watch this and there could be 10 different takeaways from this film for yeah people. absolutely uh, yeah i feel like it's open to which one you know one of the things i love about films is films that leave it open for the audience to decide what they think happened. Yes. Uh, and this doesn't really, it doesn't really give you a, um, a hard hitting, like, uh, this is the message. It lets you decide what you think the message of this film was. Uh, right. Um, and so it's like, is it, is it about death and grieving? Is it about uh, corruption? Is it, I think there was stuff at the end that we didn't even, uh, at least I didn't understand about where they were traveling to. And she's never been, he's been twice, I don't know where yeah. exactly they were going. Um, right, yeah. which which for me for me I don't know exactly where they were going, but for me that tip, that typified the the larger picture, which was for me the more powerful one, which was the allegory. Which I wrote I wrote this down. Um, it's actually a double allegory where Deepak represents um, he Deepak is the first allegorical representation. He represents class or caste discrimination, and Devi represents the second allegory, which is discrimination against women. And, and in the end, the two meet and ride off depicting something akin to the hopes we all have that maybe someday we'll be able to see class distinction and women's uh, 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 prejudices leave the old closed minded world behind them and literally ride off into the sunset. And that, that was one of my favorite quotes in the film when she says to her dad, um, the smaller the city, the narrower the worldview. Mm. Yeah. So that's the, that's the big for me. That was the most powerful takeaway from this, and it did it. You're absolutely right. It it did it without pontificating mm. uh, or trying to proselytize you into saying in a um, – which is a credit to the writing as well as the storytelling with the director in just two hours, man. Yeah, it's a really short film. It went by, went by real quick. Really quick, and everybody was top-notch. I mean this was Vicky Kashal's debut. Yeah, and I think this is one of my favorite things he's done. Uh, absolutely and, and he's always been amazing obviously everything he's done there's never he's never in our opinion had a bad performance in anything we've seen him in and I, i'm now because we often get told um that vicky kershaw is one of the most underrated uh actors in india and that we haven't explored him enough and I see it now obvi obviously it's just that we the way you're introduced to a actor is how you see them for a long time uh mm -hmm. so like when India, they were introduced to Kapoor, they think of him as Chocolate Boy. So they're like, "What? Well, he can? He's not right. an actor, right?" He, he's Great example, just, yeah. He's just Chocolate Boy. So we were introduced right. to him as Uri, uh, a big, muscular, um, strong man. And now mm -hmm. we're seeing his range and everything that we've seen him in, from Raghurama 2.0 to this to uh, wasn't he in um, seven? Was he in seven? No, that was uh, John John Abraham. Um, but he's been in uh, quite a few things that we've seen now, and he has such a range. And I'm like, huge range. 
I'm liking Me too. Uh, he, he's quickly becoming one of my favorites uh, now that I'm starting to see the entire picture of his of his talent. He, he can, he's, has a, he has a huge range. Yeah, this, I would say, there are two things about this film. Uh, it reminded me, it's a completely different feeling of film, but it reminded me in its groundedness and its believability of Kambalanji Nights. Yeah, yeah. For and sure. that that and in that I can't think of a more grounded. There's been equal grounded ones like immediately coming to mind would be Ramen Rog of 2.0 as well as Lunchbox that Absolutely. are crazy grounded real small Irfan style of believability. This is about as grounded a Hindi film as I've I think we've ever seen. Yeah, this is um, definitely. Well, I think we need to sit down and make a list of top ten films you should recommend to your American friends or something like that. Yeah, this, this is be, in it. This would be very high on the list. Very high. Um, it obviously depends on who, what kind of person, like what kind of film that person likes. So if they don't right. like a, a drama, if they like, I mean, hopefully you're not talking to people that just like Dwayne the Rock Johnson films. Uh, <laughs> and they actually yeah, no, like, this is an actor's movie. This is a yeah. movie for actors to, to enjoy watching the, the craft. But I feel like an, any American could watch this and be like, that was a good film. That was really Oh, good. yeah. This is coming out of India? That's, yeah. What, yeah. Right. And, and give them some tastes um, of things that they might not be exposed to before and actually see what that slice of life is like. Like, for example, they talk about Durga Puja, but they don't go too deep in it. You know, it's no. just like, ooh, I wonder what that is. Yeah, um, they talk, and then they, obviously the stuff with the Ganji and then the burning of the bodies and then the caste system. They go into a, a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, they don't really explain, but it gives you a little entry into some of the culture. Uh, yeah, and how how about in the midst of the storytelling, let's talk about some of the things that I, I just – I love two things right off the bat. First was how about that reveal when he's burning the bodies and he discovers it's her by her hand coming out with the ring on it? <laughs> I didn't get – my wife called it before it happened. <laughs> Oh, she knew that was coming? Yeah. Wow. She, I did she, not see that coming. Like I told you guys, she's smarter than all of us. Uh, oh, yeah. but, we know. She, she. <laughs> uh, but no, she. Uh, we were watching it, and she was like, he, she just got off the phone, and he was doing stuff, and he's like, she's like, um, I think it's going to be his girl. <laughs> Um, and, then, and then she's like, I'm hoping that bus didn't like, go into the river or something like that. Uh, and then it happened, and I was like, wow, you're... You're so smart. I love you. So smart. <laughs> um, and I also did you did you like? I really loved the choice for Devi to, and I, I just loved how it ended with them both being there and having come through their relational griefs and tragedies when she didn't open the box that had been a gift to her and she just put it in the water. Yeah, and I thought that was another one of the messages of the film was grief, different types of grief. Um, yes, a lover's grief. Um, um, or um, pain, uh, and so it was about almost letting go because you saw that one great scene where Vicky finally broke down oh. with, his, with his friends, which uh, he did a phenomenal job. Beautiful um, work. And so that was that was a great scene. And then that, at the end, that was her finally letting go because she knew if she opened it, she would have held on to that. Yes. And so she wanted to she wanted to let go of it and uh, move on with her life. And that was a, a, another thing with the boat at the end and. Yeah, I think the where where they were going had some significance. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think where they were going has some type of significance. It probably did. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm I'm sure there's other significances that we didn't pick up on because we haven't grown up in India and there's cultural things that would have had a lot of messages we wouldn't have picked up on. And yeah, I the the other thing with the ring was I I, I saw the uh, choice because people have to go through this when they lose a loved one. It's a decision of I know that that loved one wanted me to have that but at the same time we're not getting to experience it together the way they intended yeah. um, and all of those tr and then there's the third grief as well we've got we got Vicky's grief we've got uh, Debbie's grief you know Deepak Debbie and then we've got the other story wiggling through this here too with her dad and the yeah. grief he's having to go through and the prejudices against him that are happening because there's another story here that's actually a third it's not allegorical it's definitive is what goes on with that cop extorting them that crap goes on yeah and i that's one of the actual things i i did enjoy uh, because they kind of just there was no resolution for that 
He just got Oops. away with it, and that was it. Got away with it. Yep. That, that was that was it. Uh, they didn't explain. They didn't, didn't like. He didn't get what he deserved. Nothing. Nope. It just. This is how life is sometimes. Uh, yep. And and you know I love that type of film that doesn't wrap everything up. And I, I, I everything about this film it's almost it's nearly a perfect film. Uh, one yeah. of the most perfect films that we've seen. Uh, yep. But I want to talk about the dad that you were just talking about. Uh, oh. He. His character, for one, outside of his acting, was great. Uh, because at first you you feel so bad, you're like, oh, this guy seems so sweet. And then he goes home and he starts slapping her, and you're like, oh, what, right. a, what a dick. And then, right. And then and then he's a, he's a dick, but then he comes back and you see how sad he is, and he takes care of that kid, and he, he's a very complex character uh, that that I really really appreciated. Uh, and then they ended up. Um, you you saw his grief there at the end about how much you know people would judge him and uh, uh, treat him differently based off of if they found out what uh, the cop was trying to accuse her of. Um, mm-hmm. But his acting, he was he. I want to watch. He's more great. Of him. He's like like when we saw uh, VJ Raz in Deli Belly. He's one of those actors. I'm like I can tell this guy is a thespian. One hundred percent. This guy's a this. I guarantee this guy's got theater in his background. Yeah. Uh, so you guys, this guy's tell, trained. You can tell us um, if we're wrong, uh, but I don't think I am because he—that's what he seems like to me. Um, yeah, he seems like well, a, and, uh, a a really good good actor because he did phenomenal in this. Yes, he really did, and as did she. Uh, I, she, um, we've seen her before, not in a lot, but we've seen her before, and she's one of those actresses who um, is just like everybody in the cast. And I think this goes out to the creative teams that um, Anurag has around him. Um, He just is connected to and with people who are just brilliant filmmakers at every level, the cinematographers, the costumers, the um, people who do the music. She She was in gangs. Yeah, one of the wives, right? Was yeah, we saw her in Gangs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and, she's and done a lot of work. We saw her in Ram Leela too. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, in Ram Leela? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we saw her in Ram Leela. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she was phenomenal. I thought uh, she was very subtle in in her acting. Subtle, small, and, grounded, real. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, guys, this might be a bore because like there's I can't I can't think of anything bad about this film. There's not one thing that I can be like, I'm going to nitpick here because I can't. There's the cinematography that we haven't talked about yet was I turned to Steph one point. And I was like, this is just beautiful. Some yeah. of the shots here are just gorgeous. Just uh, beautiful. <laughs> so that's gave a, you a real sense, a real sense, too, which is which is which I'm finding to be really typical of the majority of films that we see, irrespective of if it's Hindi or Tamil or Telugu or, Mar- you know, uh, that a lot of them do a really, really good job of like what Scorsese does in Taxi Driver, where where New York is part of the story. It's like an actual character in the story. This, this like Kambalanji Nights, like I could go down a list of other films where they have taken the city or the locale and they have so made it a part of the story that you can't help but see they intentionally gave you a picture of that street and that road and that river and that place and that feeling. And you get a sense of, and cause that's a huge contributor to the makeup of people is where they're from. So I agree. I just, it, there's no, and there's no dumb white actors in it. So that's a bonus. That, uh, is, a, that is, that is a nice thing <laughs> when, uh, when a film goes by and there's no, uh, terrible white actors, uh, ruining but, everything. But really everybody, the little kid, the little diver swimming kid was great. He did great. Um, all the supporting roles were great. I remember watching the scene where Vicky's playing them the song, uh, not the the poem and the talking together, and they're just listening. And I looked over at one of the other guys who's got the smaller role, and I could see on his face this genuine sense of being happy for his buddy. It wasn't voyeuristic. It was we're really happy. This guy's he's in love. Look at this. This is really sweet. I, I just I'm I'm the girl who his his first girl that he loves who who dies who was of a higher cast i thought she did some really beautifully grounded work everybody was just beautifully grounded yeah and then the score was very subtle and and and, Mm -hmm. and beautiful just like everything else in the film very nice like i said guys this is one of yeah it's a it's a nearly perfect movie (laughs) i get why you because a lot of people have been recommending this to us for a long long time i had to actually order this dvd from ebay 
because I, I can't find it. Shame. Which I can't because it's not that's, anywhere. How does a movie, seriously, man? How does a movie produced by Anya Kashyap and it's got Vicky Kashal and it's got Sanjay Mishra uh, and it's got Tripathi, who was his usual grounded, wonderful self? How does a movie this good that went that was talked about at Cannes? How is it not streaming? Well, because that pisses me off. <laughs> just like most Anurag films, he probably didn't do amazing. Like it, it probably did okay, um, but so it, there's, no, there's no big Bollywood numbers in it. It's not. There's not um, huge stars in it. Obviously, Vicky Kushal was just at the beginning of his career. Um, it was a no-name director at the time. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 one of those things. It's just it's just like stuff that's you see here that's independent. Almost is basically almost an independent film, basically. Uh, yeah. From from what I can tell, um, but it's yeah, like like Florida Project. We always go back to that as one of the best films we've seen here in a long time. Which was a small film. If Willem Dafoe wasn't in it, nobody even knows it existed, and it was just fantastic. Lighthouse as so, well. Yeah. Yeah, Lighthouse. It just. It's such a shame that some of the greatest motion pictures that will ever be made, the majority of people will never even see. Uh, yeah. It just pisses me off. But, <laughs> oh, but also, we saw this. Also, uh, Tripathi, I know we haven't talked to you. You know he was amazing. Every, I, told, I told my wife, like, while I was, we came on screen and we were watching him, like, he's, he's just so fun to watch. <laughs> because he's and he so, got another. He's, you know, go ahead, go ahead. He, he's unique. And he's obviously he's obviously so good, uh, and so you, you always believe him. But he's also the way he delivers his lines and his speech is so unique, and he's it makes him such an interesting character. Uh, so, yeah, so, so interesting to watch. You just enjoy watching him. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. One of, one of those things. It's, his character, I love the right and choice to to not let it become anything other than what he begins to share and doesn't get to share because you know what he was going to share with her toward the end of the film. Yep. And he's 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 trying to get there and you know there's nothing's going to happen but I love that they took the time in a in a rather already complex thing to give this other character some he he goes through his own little grief thing of loss that he's for all we know he spends the rest of his life wondering what could have happened with that that young woman I thought was so wonderful. I just it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. So good. Let us know what yeah. we should watch and review next down below. Vicky Gushal, Tripathy, uh, Tripathy. I, you know, I don't know how to say his name. Um, I think that uh, I think um, this is actually his latest. The, uh, the director. Um, yeah, I'd love to see more from. Yeah. from uh, so uh, he, um, the last thing he did was Sacred Games. Miraj. Yeah, the last thing he did was Sacred Games. So look at this. So this is his career. So he did a short film in 2011. He was an assistant director on Gangs of Wasipur. He did a short film uh, called Epiphany in 2013. He did a uh, he was okay. He he was a director of a, something called Shorts in uh, 2013, produced by Anirad Kashyap. Mm. Uh, and then he was a second unit director on Ugly. And then he directed Masan. And then he directed Juice. And then Sacred Games. There's a reason he's that good, is because it's very clear that he was brought under the tutelage of Anurag and got to watch and see that kind of um, quality. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah bring on some more. Yeah, and you know we love that short film, Juice. So oh, <laughs> that was exactly. such a good one. Let us know what we yep. should watch next down below. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for.